Hello, 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 this is Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago, as usual, with the Wi-Fi just booming. Life is good. We have a follow-up. I snuck in the video right before I went out last night. Absolutely snuck it in. It's called When, when Malingering Fails. Link in the description. I have to say it's an entertaining watch. I'd recommend it. Fun video. Brilliant commentary. <laughs> Well, well, the, the the short version of it is uh, the the guy's whining about his heart, so he he, he ends up uh, spending another night in jail. And today we get the follow up appearance and arraignment. Also, this is all Alyssa's fault. I see her in there. She's right. It's all Alyssa's fault. She sent me another clip, and I and I grabbed that one too because, well, it's been a slow Sunday. <laughs> So if if you like if you like this video you can you can uh you can thank Alyssa and if you don't like it you can blame her. I take no responsibility here. <laughs> One way or the other. All right, let's get this party started, shall we? Love exciting and new. On the record in State of Michigan versus Robert Lee Burley, 2400502FY. Appearance, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Tara Nickel from the Ingham County Public Defender's Office on behalf of Mr. Burley for arraignment only this morning. And you, sir, you are Robert Lee Burley. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Burley, we're going to try and arraign you again. What I have here is a felony complaint. This alleges that on or about February 22nd, 2024 at 230 Jones Street, City of Lansing, Ingham County, Michigan. Count one that you did make an assault upon Kevin Gibson by strangulation or suffocation. That is a felony punishable by 10 years and or $5,000. DNA to be taken upon arrest. And count two, domestic violence that you did make an assault or assault and battery on Kevin Gibson, an individual with whom you've had a dating relationship. Misdemeanor, 93 days, or $500. Do you understand the charges and the possible penalties? Yes, Your Honor. You have the right to have an attorney in this matter. If you cannot afford one, we'll see if the public defender's office will represent you. You have the right to a trial. That could be by jury. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing will be used against you in court. You have the right to have an attorney present with you uh, during any questioning by law enforcement. You understand these rights? Yes, Your Honor. When I saw you yesterday, you said you wanted a public defender for this case. That's still true. Yes, Your Honor. Now, since count one is a felony, you have the right to have a preliminary examination. That's a hearing where the government must bring some evidence to demonstrate probable cause to believe the felony occurred and probable cause to believe that you were the person who committed the felony. That will be March 15 at 145. Before we get to preliminary exam, there will be a probable cause conference on March 8, 9 a.m., also here with me. That is a date where the lawyers and yourself, just make sure you have all the evidence and information you have to be ready for that preliminary exam. Probable cause conference may be done via video conferencing like we're doing now. Uh, but if you can't video conference, don't want a video conference, your phone doesn't work, you need to come to court, you should not miss your court date. And then if... Uh, if uh, that second date, March 15, that's in person because evidence and testimony may be presented. So you have to be here March 15 in person. Hey, uh, are, are you on probation, parole, or bond in any court? No, Your Honor. Okay. Now, one of the orders of the court is going to be that you remain separate from Kevin Gibson until this case is decided. Looks like they wrote down an address in your Eaton Rapids for you. Is that a valid address? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. My father lives. Okay. That's the first thing it made me think They of. also wrote down a phone number that ends with 7383. Is that a valid phone number? No. Okay. What's a good number for you? Thank you. I actually have a bond report here uh, for Mr. Burley from Preach House Services. And my recommendation from pretrial services is release on own recognizance, not recommended. 
I see um, Mr. Hurley's record here. I see the 2010 operating well visibly impaired. And then I see a 2007 suppressed uh, similar, I guess you'd say, offense. Um, okay, Ms. Nickel unbound for Mr. Burley. Thank you, Your Honor. I do understand uh, pretrial services concern regarding the nature of the uh, charges to not recommend a personal recognizance bond. However, uh, per the history that we just went over, Mr. Burley doesn't have any uh, prior assaultive convictions and he is presumed innocent at this time. Uh, if the court is unwilling to do a personal recognizance bond this time, I'd ask for a low 10% bond. Thank you. I guess maybe we should have a um, conversation about what the suppressed offense means as far as record because it is, as I said, similar conduct to this case, which means assaultive. <clears throat> I think the other concern is uh, pretrial services said there's a substance abuse issue. There's, um, they understand Mr. Burley's not currently working. Please let me go home, my father and your honor. Mr. Burley, you have demonstrated an inability to conform your behavior to the rules of the court. And what that means is, is that I don't trust you as much as I could in the community to follow my rules. Do you want me to trust you to follow my rules? Please, Your Honor. I, I can be trusted. No, Mr. Burley. <laughs> I won't do anything. Yep. So this is the same kind of stuff you were doing yesterday that I asked you not to do. And I'm telling you, if you can't follow the rules during court, then I definitely don't think you're going to follow the rules in the community. So, all right. Uh, based on the nature of the offense, Mr. Burley's criminal record and my efforts to uh, craft bond conditions that might allow a safe release into the community, Mr. Burley, I'm going to set your bond at 5,500 personal recognizance. That means you don't have to post bond today as long as you follow these rules. Oh, she does let him out. Although it's hilarious the way she talks to him. It really is. He deserves it. But ultimately, she's nice to him. She gives him a PR. He still can't shut his hole, though. Firstly, you must attend your court dates. I gave you two, March 8, March 15. You must attend those court dates. Do not leave the state of Michigan without permission from the court. Do not commit any crimes while released. Notify the court in writing immediately if you change your address or telephone number. You must report to pretrial services the first business day following your release. You should have a brochure with a phone number to call. Do not use alcohol, marijuana, or illegal controlled substances. You are to participate in two-time monthly random urine screens for your sobriety. That will be set up when you contact pretrial services. Do not possess or purchase a firearm or dangerous weapon. Do not engage in harassing, intimidating, stalking, or threatening behavior. Do not assault, harass, intimidate, beat, molest, wound, or threaten Kevin Gibson. You are not to have any direct or indirect contact with Kevin Gibson. You're not to be within 2,000 feet of where he lives, works, or goes to school. You are to wear a GPS tether with victim notification if possible in a zone surrounding Mr. Gibson's residence to assure you're complying with the no contact order. Further, I order that you must contact CMH Access Program on the first business day following your release. You must contact CMH Access the first business day following your release. Now to explain further, this no contact order for Mr. Gibson is very serious. If you violate this order, you could be arrested without a warrant. Your bond could be revoked. You could be in contempt of court for which you'd face up to 93 days in jail and or $7,500 in fines separate and apart from that which you already face. This order is about you, it's not about him. If he were texting you or calling you, he could do that. You text or call him back and you go to jail. He does not have authority to grant you permission to violate a court order. It is the court's order. So if he invited you to meet up with him and you went, you'd still be risking jail. Mr. Burley, do you understand your bond conditions? I'm sorry, they haven't unmuted. Hold on one second. <laughs> oh, that's okay. right. We muted your ass. <laughs> All right. Mr. Burley, do you understand your bond conditions? Now, Foley, can I ask a question? Yes. So um, I'm going home on tether. 
Yes, you must wear a tether. You must do testing for your sobriety. You must contact CMH. So I get to go home of today then? Whenever you can arrange the tether. I don't know if that will be arranged today or tomorrow. No, Kevin. Okay, thank you, Your Honor, for giving me the opportunity to help prove myself outside of this work. Okay. Ms. Nickel, uh, okay. we talked about the charge, the court dates, the bond, the conditions. Anything else we need to discuss for Mr. Burley? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good day. I think that's it for arraignments. Yes, thank you. Your Honor. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost This ain't my lawyer. This is, that's my judge, I think, but that's not my lawyer. That's right. That's what you get for whining about the uh, the love boat clip. That's right. You get air supply. Am I supposed to see you? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh. Oh. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. What is your name? Huh? Andrea Jackson. Your Honor, this is Andrew Jackson. Oh, yes, there's my lawyer. <laughs> Sorry. This is, this is Andrew Jackson. We have two cause numbers. One that's not for an arraignment, uh, 24L000209. And then there's this one's a naughty girl. It, it, some of these, uh, some of the specifics here are really out there. There's a tracking review 18L001006. Oh. Um, Matt Rusnak. Council of Record on the uh, the 18L cause number. Um, I will be seeking a direct appointment on the new matter. Um, as to arraignment, Miss Jackson has been apprised of her constitutional rights. She understands those rights at this point. We are going to uh, waive formal reading the complaint. Inter pleas of not guilty on all counts. Um, I can't stipulate the PC. I have not been given a PC statement. Um, we did review the rights, as I said, though. So. Um, I think oh. we're going to have to have the uh, city supplement. Oh, I don't believe so. Jesus. I don't. I don't know if she's praying or she's got IBS or what's going on here. But but this this uh, on some level goes throughout the hearing. Are you asking for appointment? You did ask for appointment on the new matter. I will Please. appoint you. The, the best part. This takes a little while, but it, it's good. It's good, and it gets worse. But seriously, the best part, and I don't know this judge, I haven't seen her before, but she just slowly loses her freaking mind. She maintains her demeanor, aside for some possible eye rolls, <laughs> but she's losing her mind. With no um, promissory note, I'll hear from the city. Yes, Your Honor, I'm, I will try to be as brief as I can, but there's a number of charges here, so it, it may take a moment. Okay. Uh, on February 4th, 2024, at 1524 hours, law enforcement was dispatched to 2702 93rd Street, Court South, number 14, in reference to, an, reference to an SUV that was driving on a citizen's yard. As law enforcement entered the area, they approached the residents from two different directions uh, and observed a white 2008 GMC Acadia. Uh, Officer Hamilton located the suspect vehicle on the east side of the aforementioned citizen's house. The vehicle was still running. Law enforcement at that time was unsure if it was occupied or if the occupants had left the vehicle. As Officer Hamilton approached, he observed a female driver uh, and he was unable to see her hands. The other officer looked around to see if there were any other per persons and noticed that the driver was hitting the accelerator and that the rear tires were spinning in vain, but that the vehicle was apparently trying to reverse toward the patrol cars. Law enforcement placed a stop stick behind oh. the right tire of the vehicle. Officer Hamilton uh, then maneuvered. I like that. She says, oh, like, oh, that's what that was. It was a stop stick. I was wondering. <laughs> his vehicle behind the suspect vehicle and commanded to turn the driver to turn the vehicle off. Uh, she did not turn the vehicle off when asked. I couldn't move. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. I'm Another officer attempted to see if the door was locked uh, and he pulled the handle and the door opened. The suspect driver then pulled back on the door in order to close it. Law enforcement held on uh, 
an attempt to get the door back open. This officer reports that he saw a, quote, far off look in the female driver, um, who then the driver then climbed over the seats to the front passenger seat and opened the passenger door. The vehicle was still running at this time. The female driver climbed out of the vehicle uh, and appeared unstable in her movement, but made her way onto a porch that uh, had an open screen door. A law enforcement officer apprehended the female driver uh, and took her to the ground and then secured her in handcuffs. That law enforcement officer that apprehended the driver searched her incident to arrest and during the search located something that looked like candies. The female driver volunteered that the candies that he had found were THC edibles. She indicated that she uses medical marijuana, but believed that someone might have laced her medical marijuana with something else. Mm -hmm. um, the woman also told police officers that she was forced to carry some narcotics in her vaginal area and requested someone assist her with that. Um, okay. Wait, let me get this right. This or, 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 Her claim is forced vaginal narcotics. Okay, check. Based on pictures of the scene, law enforcement noted the following that the vehicle had driven about 25 feet into the backyard of this individual uh, belonging to this individual and through a shed apparently completely destroying it um, and also hit a carport but did not strike the vehicle inside um, how did she miss the vehicle she 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 demolished the shed <laughs> she got the car report, but not the vehicle inside. That's pretty good. With some gummies, some vaginal narcotics, and drunker than Cooter Brown. Law enforcement <laughs> also reports that they observed unstable walking, a faraway look, and a failure to follow simple instructions, uh, as well as admissions to, it says here, admissions to narcotic use and THC use. Um, and for that reason, they took her into custody and charged DUI, hit and run, um, DWLS th third, obstructing a law enforcement officer, and I think there's one more charge. Yeah, that might be it. Oh, that was it. Yeah, thank you. That's enough. I mean, you know, anyway, slice it. <laughs> And your honor, I actually don't know that I'm kidding. I'd ask the court not to find probable cause on the hit and run. As far as I can see, Miss Miss Jackson was still on at the scene of the accident and at the time that she was arrested. So I I would just ask the court, or I'd seek a probable cause finding on the other three charges. And I, I think I actually have more information about the license suspension. So one moment. Uh, law enforcement indicates that they never has the phrase, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, but more apropos did a DOL check and confirmed that Ms. Jackson was driving while licensed suspended third degree. Your Honor, Sorry, I think is, it is, is, this, is defense stipulating to those three? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. I'll hear from, from the parties considering release. Your Honor, uh, as the court probably can note from the facts that I've laid out just now. This was a, a very, very serious DUI. Um, it involved a, apparently the complete destruction of a shed as well as hitting another building. Uh, the individual at the house is the one who called 911. I would argue to the court that it's it's fairly lucky that he himself was not struck. I think a, a little bit different circumstances and Miss Jackson may have collided with the house. Uh, she also has, I believe two previous DUIs, including one in Lakewood Municipal Court where she pled guilty in July of 2019. Uh, the other DUIs from 2000. In the 2019 case, well, where she pled in 2019, there were six warrants issued on that case, including one uh, when she was terminated from EHM based on attempting to use false urine for a UA Following that, she then failed to report for jail multiple times. Um, 
So based on all of that, the city does think that bail is is necessary here and would ask the court to impose bail in the amount of $75,000. If Ms. Jackson should pose bail, the city would ask that she be required to enroll on EHM immediately at her own expense and not wait uh, for the next available probation date, uh, as well as the following conditions. Do not drive a vehicle without an ignition interlock device. Don't drive without valid license and insurance. Don't drive with a blood alcohol concentration of 0 0.08 or higher or a THC concentration of five nanograms per milliliter or higher. Uh, do not refuse a reasonable request by law enforcement for a breath or blood test. And do not uh, possess or consume alcohol, cannabis, or other non-prescribed drugs. I'll hear from defense. Thank you. Um, the affirmative conditions are appropriate, and um, I, I believe, at least as far as the alcohol monitoring, I think a uh, statute mandates it, given the history. Um, I think counsel accidentally said EHM. I think he was talking about scram or tad or something that monitors alcohol not so much her movements um she um she um she meaning miss jackson does have stable housing she has assured me before court that she will come back to court as directed and comply with any conditions of release and so she is asking me to ask the court to release her on her own recognizance okay The court is looking at um, multiple alcohol-related offenses uh, that stretch back in time uh, until uh, Ms. Jackson was a minor. Looking at um, multiple DUIs. Reckless driving. Driving while license suspended in the second degree. Along with those alcohol related infractions. The instant allegations give this court a lot of concern for public safety. I am going to ask uh, for bail in the amount of $75,000, given the alleged facts and the extensive history of alcohol use here. The court is also concerned um, about the allegation uh, the city outlined of attempt to use false urine and the multiple FTAs for jail. That's also figuring into the court's decision in this case to impose a high bail. The court views that as interference with the administration of justice. One moment. I'm going to set an in custody date for February 12th. Mr. Rusnick has been appointed. Ma'am, uh, should you be released, you'll have no criminal law violations. Update any address changes immediately with the court. Use only your true legal name and date of birth. Do not drive without a valid license and proof of insurance. Do not drive or be in physical control of a motor vehicle with an alcohol concentration of 0.08 or more or a THC concentration of 5 nanograms per milliliter of whole blood or higher within two hours of driving. Have no alcohol-related infractions. Do not submit. I'm going to ask that you have no moving traffic violations. Do not refuse to submit to a breath test or blood test upon the request of law enforcement. Do not use or possess alcohol, non-prescribed drugs, cannabis, or drug paraphernalia. Comply with um, Department of Licensing rules and requirements for the uh, installation and use of a functioning ignition interlock device. You're to have a functioning ignition interlock device installed on all motor vehicles you drive. 
comply with a 24-7 sobriety program monitoring within, and uh, I'll uh, refer to the city, what you were saying about the... Uh, Your Honor, I was asking that if she is released and, and post bail, that she be required to be outfitted with a scram device within 48 hours. I realize that's that the next uh, probation date for that would be March 5th. I just don't think that the city would ask that she not be allowed to wait, I guess, any period of time beyond 48 hours, even if that means that the scram device has to be at her own expense. And uh, Mr. McCullough, were you asking uh, for another date for her to return back to this court to enter into scram at at the court expense? Uh, that would be Mr. Resnack, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Resnack. Are you, Mr. Are, Resnack. are you asking? Uh, well, yeah, at some point, I think that um, if she does make bail, um, which is kind of at the at at this amount, maybe not realistic. Uh, but if she does make bail, I, I will note that up at that time. I don't want to risk her getting an FTA. Well, actually, sure, set one. You know why? Because if if she's not in, if she's not out of custody, it'll be a moot point. But let's just set one out of an abundance of caution. Yeah, let's just do it. Okay, the out of custody court date should she be released will be. <laughs> March 7th here in Lakewood Municipal, Municipal Court. So that'll be March 7th at 1 p.m. And then, Your Honor, I just uh, wanted to bring up on the review matter, um, well, number one, to address that, uh, the cities will be moving to revoke release on that on the basis of the new allegations, uh, but is asking the court not to take any action on the review matter right now. The city's request is that the bail the court imposed uh, all be on the new matter uh, and not on the review matter. But And that's where I've placed it. Okay. Uh, out of custody court will be March 7th at 1 p.m. in Lakewood Municipal Court. Defendant to enter into scram alcohol detection within 48 hours of her release from custody at her expense. Failure to do so will result in the issuance of a $25,000 cash or bond warrant. Defendant, if released, okay. no. defendant to uh, come to Lakewood Municipal Court probation. Don't worry, hang in there. On March 12th. This still gets worse. So enter into scram at court expense. Um, on March 12th at 2 p.m. Failure to report will result in $25,000 cash or bond warrant. At no time after release, well, I should say at no time 48 hours after release, defendant be unmonitored for alcohol. Cost for IID will be at defendant expense. But I ask if, if she's supposed to be hooked up within 20, uh, 48 hours, assuming she is able to post, and she's not able to get an appointment or maybe apparatus isn't available within 48 hours for her to get hooked up to, how does she avoid falling into um, violation mode of conditions of release, does she have to report back to jail? I and mean, what happens then? Oh, uh, City, do you have any input? Sorry, am I, if she doesn't enroll in, in Scram, was that the question? Let's say yeah. she makes a good faith effort, okay, not, some, not just ignores it, and the agency, whatever, the place she goes and she looks around, makes due diligence, maybe calls more than one place, assuming the first place can't take her in 48 within 48 hours and she's not able to do it how do the, the, this is fun just because the defense attorney is uh working for his client he's trying to clarify this issue but the prosecutor says exactly what i'm thinking which is i, I don't know we don't care she <laughs> then prevent herself from falling automatically into default and violating conditions of release does she have to report back to jail what does she have to do 
does she have to walk in the next available court date and, and present that issue to the court? I, I'm just kind of looking for direction. I'm sure she would like it as well. I mean, I, I guess I don't have any specific comment on, on advice for her. I just, I don't, the city's position is that, you know, the city doesn't want to release unless it's on Scram. Um, that just seems imperative to the city. I guess I don't have anything else to add. We'll cross that bridge if that situation arises, then. Just putting it out there on the record if it comes up. Okay, so cost for ignition interlock device will be at defendant expense. Cost for scram will be at defendant expense until March 12, 2024. I'm saving that document. And there is a standing order of ignition interlock device that outlines all of the rules and regulations uh, that this court expects you to follow regarding the ignition interlock device. I am signing that. Going back to sign the pretrial release. Okay, and I'm signing. Is there anything else in this matter? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Jackson is done. Ms. Wally, thank you. Oh, you think it's over, but it's not. Hey, Mr. Uh, uh, and Your Honor, I, I um, pointed out to the court and to the prosecutor's office that uh, my office had a conflict with Ms. Uh, Ms. Finch, and Mr. Rusnak uh, had been previously appointed to um, Ms. Finch. So I'm hoping Mr. Rusnak uh, uh, sticks around for uh, Ms. Finch. Okay, good. Okay. Hey, Ms. Jackson is done. Yeah, that's what she thinks. <laughs> Ms. Jackson, do you have an officer there? She wants to get rid of her so bad. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, happen. Message them. Look at the judge's face after she asked her first question. Ms. Qualley, Ms. Jackson is done. They don't hear me. No, they do. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Bringing up your pretrial release commitment again. Everything was muted. I would, uh, you guys couldn't hear when I was talking or anything. I... <sighs> oh. You are going to get a copy of your orders. But yeah. they didn't give it to me last time either. They keep saying that, but they never give me that, no paperwork. And they stole my ashes from my baby last time and everything and my ring. Okay. They didn't give me nothing and let me out with nothing. Okay. I had to pay $100 to get home. Okay, we, we were just addressing the question, what's expected of you at this point? You're going to get, Mr. Farrow and I are going to have some discussion. They're going to get the discovery to me. And then uh, I'll get with you after we get, after I get the materials and uh, an opening, the beginning of a dialogue between the parties. And I'll communicate okay. with you. So no criminal law violations. Update your address changes immediately with the court. Use only your true legal name and date of birth. Do not drive without a valid license and proof of insurance. Don't drive or be in physical control of a motor vehicle with an alcohol concentration of 0 0.08 or more or C THC concentration. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was muted again. It was muted. It's, it's, it's not muted now. Okay, what was the last thing you heard? I don't know because I was trying to get you guys' attention. I was trying to fix it. Hey, don't break the law. Update your address. Use your true legal name. Everything I did everything I'm supposed to be do. Be quiet. Be quiet and listen. Don't drive without a valid license. 
Don't drive or be in physical control of a motor vehicle with an alcohol concentration of 0.08 or more or a THC concentration of 5 nanograms per milliliter of whole blood or higher within two hours of driving. Have no alcohol-related infractions. I don't drink. No moving, no moving traffic violations. Do not refuse to submit to a breath test or blood test upon the request of law enforcement. Oh. Do not use or possess alcohol, non-prescribed drugs, cannabis, or drug paraphernalia. Okay. Have a functioning ignition interlock device installed on all motor vehicles you drive. Mm -hmm. Comply with the 24-7 sobriety program monitoring within 48 hours. The cost for ignition interlock device shall be at your expense. The cost for the scram. How if I don't have no money, though? If I can't work? If my bones don't cost work? For, listen to me. Cost for scram will be at your expense until March 12th. The out-of-custody court date will be March 7th at 1 p.m. in Lakewood Municipal Court. You're so to I enter scram within 48 hours of your release. Failure to do so will result in the issuance of a $25,000 cash or bond warrant. You're to enter into scram at court expense on the next available date, which is March 12th at 2 p.m. Failure to report will result in a $25,000 cash or bond warrant. At no time, 48 hours after release from oh. custody, should you be unmonitored for alcohol. You have in custody bail at $75,000. You're released, and that is under cause number, that's the new charge, cause number 24L000209. You're released on all other charges. So how much do I have to pay to get out? So you're going to talk to your attorney, okay? That is what is expected of you. If you have any further questions, you got to talk to your attorney. Okay. How do I talk to him? Are you Mr. Rosnap, you're on mute. I am. I'll call you later. Okay. But I need to know how much I need to get out. Okay. So, Miss Jackson is yes. done. I've got to move on to somebody else. How much does it cost for me to get out, though? Are you guys going to tell me that? Where did Mr. Resnick go? He's going to call you. Okay. So, everything's on the computer? And I'm just supposed to know with no computer? Man, you guys don't make sense. Fuck. Okay. 25,000. That's the necessary dollars. I know, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's stupid. Hey, it's obvious it's $2,500. Yeah, you can do it. No, 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 ma'am, no, ma'am, you're right, it is crazy. Let's change that. Bond's 50000 Ah, there you go. A nice heartwarming Sunday night stream. Thank you, Alyssa. That was a lot of fun. I certainly, I certainly didn't, uh, didn't find anything by myself today. So th that was good. And of course we, we got the update of, of, uh, of our guy who was uh, malingering with his heart condition, or at least it appears. So I'm glad he's still with us in all seriousness. I'm glad, it, I'm glad, it, you know, I'm, I'm glad he, <laughs> he didn't buy the farm yet at less yesterday and, and could make it back for his arraignment and get through it. Good times. Good times. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I will see you all soon.